International law is clear about what the world has to do with war criminals. That is the view of Germany's foreign minister, Annalena Baerbock, who you see behind me here. Her remarks, they come after debate about South Africa's invitation to Russian President Vladimir Putin to attend a BRICS summit in Johannesburg this coming August. Take a listen. South Africa has already made clear that it's a member of the International Criminal Court and it has ratified the Rome Statute. That makes very clear once more that this Russian war of aggression is not just purely a European affair, but that it affects the entire world. International law is clear on that point. International law makes clear that war criminals those responsible for wars of aggression will one day be held responsible. All right, let's take up this story. My next guest is Angela Mudakuti, a Zimbabwean human rights lawyer specializing in international criminal law. She has worked at the International Criminal Court. It is good to have you with us. This is a story that um, is rather explosive. If Vladimir Putin, if he takes up the, the invitation to attend the BRICS summit in August, South Africa will then have to decide what to do. What do you think is going to happen? That's a very good question, and your guess is as good as mine, because what the law says they should do is that they should arrest President Vladimir Putin should he arrive in South Africa. But we know from 2015, when former President Bashir was in South Africa, there was an attempt to have him arrested, which was a case I worked on with the organization I was with at the time. Mm -hmm. And the law was clear in that case, and yet South Africa failed to arrest President Omar al-Bashir. So there's that precedent, which unfortunately doesn't set a very satisfying picture as far as justice and accountability is concerned. But my hope is that this time they've learned from their mistakes and that they will act in accordance with the rule of law. Well, you know, with your information, I think our viewers are going to find this very interesting. If There's already a, a precedent that South Africa can built upon. That speaks for Vladimir Putin to enjoy full immunity when he goes to, to South Africa, doesn't it? Well, I don't know if it speaks for him enjoying full immunity. It speaks for South Africa failing to uphold the rule of law and fulfill its duty, which is to arrest him should he arrive in South Africa. So the question whether he actually has immunity or not from where I stand and based on the precedent from the Bashir case, because remember this case went to the Supreme Court of Appeal in South Africa where they ruled that South Africa had a duty to arrest him. Mm -hmm. And the International Criminal Court has also said a similar thing in the past with regard to heads of state and immunity. So there should be no immunity, he should be arrested. So this is a question of South Africa doing the right thing. and. President Vladimir Putin doesn't have immunity in this instance. So it, it, assuming South Africa is not going to do the right thing, what does this mean for the legitimacy of the International Criminal Court? I think what we're facing here is a situation that could damage the legitimacy of the International Criminal Court because the court has already been criticized for being inefficient, for taking too long with its cases, for only going after a certain group, and issuing arrest warrants that are never executed is not good for the court. And it speaks to the entire system, the international criminal justice system, which relies on state cooperation. The ICC has no police, or for, police force of its own. It relies on states to fulfill the arrest warrants. And when states are not cooperating, the court cannot get people in the dock. And so the whole system, I think, is in jeopardy here if there are arrest warrants that are not fulfilled. I think it's very dangerous. And I think it also sends an unfortunate message to the victims of genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. The message should be that nobody's above the law. And that's what the court is designed to do, but without state cooperation, it's very difficult. And, and this is a message that we would think would be a, a no-brainer for, for, for South Africa, considering its history. I mean, this would be an opportunity, you could see it as an opportunity for South Africa to take a stand for human rights, the rule of law. It carries the flag for all of Africa, particularly when we're talking about the, the BRICS group, for example. But that's, um, that's not going to happen, is it? I hope it will. I hope it will. But it's very difficult to say at this point because we're getting conflicting messages from different parts of government in South Africa. The latest is that perhaps there's an opportunity for Vladimir Putin to participate remotely. There's been talk about moving the summit to China. There's been talk about not arresting him should be arrived. So there's just conflicting messages from the authorities. And so it's very difficult to predict what will happen. But as I said, I hope lessons were learned from 2015 when President Bashir was there and that South Africa will either opt not to host the summit, which wouldn't be unusual, by the way. There's precedent for this in other instances. Or that should Vladimir Putin arrive, that they will arrest him. 
Yeah, I mean, it is definitely going to be one of those events that the whole world is going to be watching South Africa to see what it does, that is for sure. Angela Murakuti, Zimbabwean human rights lawyer, we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us on this Friday. Thank you. Thank you for having me.